welcome to this new interview of 30 Minutes with live from Pretoria, the coolest South African city. No, it's not So, yeah, Pretoria. I think we have a community. We have a Pretoria. We have a Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we are at the house of Pretoria here in Melbourne, and we are with lovely and brilliant young African women. And we're going to discuss what it means to be young. So, how do you start? Caroline, can you, talk about, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Yeah, so what it means to be young in African today to me is uh, being young and still having time to live hopefully uh, in a continent which has like a million opportunities. We have a lot of untapped resources, we have a lot of untapped relations which are starting to forge. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a century where there's so much investment which is put in unleashing the giants within young people mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. So for me today, being young and being in Africa, I feel like, you know, uh, sky is just a point of view. It's not even a limit. Mm -hmm. like there are limitless options, there are limitless opportunities, mm -hmm. and the time is now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can talk about how we met. We met uh, because we took part of the Emerging African Leaders program uh, last year in uh, Cape Town. Mm -hmm. But Nancy is uh, the, how do you say, dinosaur? Oh, <laughs> she was the first cohort uh, <laughs> ever selected for this program. <laughs> so, Nancy, how did it feel like? So, I'm not really a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I was a pioneer and how it felt. Mm -hmm. Just the connection of meeting brilliant 25 young African leaders from different parts of Africa and just being able to connect in a space and discover ourselves. One thing I really like from the program is the aspect of journaling. Mm -hmm. And with journaling you get to reflect, you get to write, you get to think about how your day was, how to be able to tell your story. and. Just the interaction in the room with the different speakers. I remember, uh, tr like Trevor Manuel, and just him speaking to us about his experience working in with Mandela and meet going to Robben Island and just walking through the very streets that Mandela and the rest of the other Africans who were in Robben Island were, were 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 captured and just that whole experience being in Cape Town. It was really lovely. I also spent time running in the morning, and so I was at least one of them. So, but looking back, in th those particular two weeks have been a turning point in my life. Mm -hmm. My life has never been the same. I remember after I came back from Cape Town, I actually ran, I contested for a position internally within our organization, mm -hmm. representing our staff on labor issues. And before I could realize it, I was now running for another position within the Africa, the Africa chapter of our organization. And for one good year, I was able to engage with uh, our management and the leadership and just being able to advocate for labor issues within mm -hmm. the organization. And I, I had I known that those particular two weeks had prepared me in terms of engaging with leaders and being able to present issues, but also shaping myself and discovering my voice and who I was. Mm -hmm. And so I look at those particular two weeks as the beginning of my discovery. I'm still in that particular discovery period and keeping in touch with the network has also been beneficial, being able to tap into each other's networks, sort of like Magda's networks. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, this particular network is something that we should work for in Africa. Mm -hmm. Out of the program, I've also been able to mentor, I would say specifically, two young African Kenyans and uh, worked with them for around six months. And right now, both of them were able to get scholarships. One just graduated today at the University of Pretoria. Mm -hmm. And he came to see me, and he's doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. And then the other one went to school in Spain, and mm -hmm. I've taken up others informally, but these ones were in a structured way, the way we did our coaching. And so I was quite excited to see the fruits of, I would say, our labor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's amazing. Uh, uh, oh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
to be honest, I was second guessing my participation in the mm -hmm. LPL program because mm -hmm. I've never had a two week away from my from my baby who were who was really young at the time, mm -hmm. and I was uh, I don't know if I could do. How old was she? She was one year and mm -hmm. some months. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I I told myself I don't know if I could do this. I didn't have the the energy the the. I couldn't leave her, um, and it was my boss, George, um, at the time, and I told him, ah, I think I got this kind of opportunity, and I'm really second guessing myself. I don't know whether to go or not. And then he put me in touch with Nancy. He said, oh wait, I know someone who went mm -hmm. to the program. Yeah, okay. And then he gave me her email address, mm -hmm. and then I emailed her, and I, and I said, um, hi, I'm so-and-so, mm -hmm. um, I just, I can't be sure if I, if I have, if, if it is, if it is a good program. I need to invest my time mm -hmm. on that program. And she wrote me such a wonderful email mm -hmm. that it was her email actually that mm -hmm. convinced me to say yes to you guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Come to the program, um, mm -hmm. and she was right. It was also a very, a very good program, an eye-opening program, mm -hmm. and it had an aspect of. Uh, personal development, mm -hmm. um, which I really loved. And I've been to countless leadership programs uh, in my career, in my time, and every leadership program focused on on, on something else, not your personal, not your internal mm -hmm. self. Mm -hmm. um, no journaling, no reflecting mm -hmm. inside, it's just always sticking it out on on, on the world and also to show it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was and at the end of the day it's your personality that matters. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day it's what you feel inside that you reflect to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of the day it's how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're confident you also reflect that to other people, if you feel mm -hmm. happy about your life and your your way you are about it and in this moment of life you also get from your leadership on what you do and, and your career as well. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the niche of this program and that's why uh, I felt like this program mm -hmm. was really helpful um, with regards to my growth and my leadership as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> You know, like in this kind of discussion, I always find um, a particular difficulty, and I think it's always mm -hmm. kind of see myself as, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I am a public servant, oh. and uh, public service is not necessarily the most exciting place, right? Most young people actually don't even want to see themselves mm -hmm. um, in in public service um, because of all the challenges that comes with working in a, in a such a structured, bureaucratic, uh, hierarchical environment. But I have to say, I think for me, participation in the program was something that was actually quite, um, quite exciting, because I think I always had the tension in me, the wanting to do things my own way, wanting to say what I really think, and the discipline of a public servant, where you, you, know, you have to kind of follow protocols and everything. And, and the program gave me a lot of opportunity to reflect on what that tension means and being comfortable also with it mm -hmm. um, and knowing that there are moments, I think that, you know, like the, the, the inputs we, we got, for example, from, um, from Prague mm -hmm. were formative, mm -hmm. were just like, I mean, I s just sat there and listening to her on what it means to be working in a, in a space that's constraining um, and that's that's that there's all sorts of things but then you can still um, stand for what you believe mm -hmm. and reading a book later on yeah. was just for me like a uh, watershed moment mm -hmm. I was just like mm -hmm. you have to be willing to take the risks um, and even listening to advocate um, Piccoli mm -hmm. was just amazing because at the end of the day you are put in a particular position for a purpose mm -hmm. and that purpose cannot just be for yourself you know it has to be for a bigger purpose and I really I'm grateful that I actually ended up going to the um, 2017 mm -hmm. class yes I was meant to have gone to the 2016 class and I was nine months pregnant oh. and we were trying to see if it was possible for me to go while I was pregnant or yeah. not mm -hmm. and then my doctor was just like <laughs> I'm not too sure. Yeah. You know, I can organize 
asking a friend of mine to help you if she will you go in labor. Okay. Well, I can't tell but you know, I I would advise her to be in the program. And then even when it happened the following year, you know, I was like all excited until I realized, oh my word, it falls on my son's birthday. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. And then at first, you know, everybody was like, it's fine, you can go. My son was like, it's fine, you can go. And then it went to get closer. I was like, but you know, this is his first birthday. Yeah. And I'm like thinking, that's not nice. <laughs> and, you know, and making all the arrangements. And I was so broke at that time when we were going to the program. Yeah. And then I was like, Okay, I don't know how we're gonna find it, but we're all going to Cape Town <laughs> for two weeks. Mm-hmm. And even like you know, we I probably met everything I had to get my family down to Cape Town for two weeks. You mm-hmm. know, uh, but I don't think it is is comparable to yeah. the value of having them yeah. um, there. Um, and you know, when the co- when the program ended, I was telling Mabel because she was there. Like the program ended, and I went to the hotel to check out, and they told me I owed them fifteen thousand rand, and I was like. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, that's not what I was told. Yeah. And at that moment, I couldn't even talk about it. Like, Mabel was sitting there, I couldn't even explain to her what's going on. My head was speaking. I was thinking, this is not a case of, are you gonna draw me up? This is a case, I don't have 15,000 rand to pay for this. I don't know where I'm gonna get this money. But lucky enough, I sold it out and I only owed the 2,000 rand. But I was just like, okay. Um, but I think, that making the decision, going with them, Nia being there, my daughter being there, my daughter connecting with all the people who are in the mm. program. She's yeah. still talks about Mabel. Yeah. <laughs> and you're done. Go we'll probably say she should take it to Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I can't imagine the impact it had on my child yeah. to have been in that space, yeah. um, to have experienced her mom um, being there. Mm. She still remembers, mm. you know, being there. So I just think. It was an amazing investment with me being broke for a few, <laughs> for a few months. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what you're saying just echoes, uh, in fact, it was a very central point in my life as well. Mm-hmm. I just gave birth, I was a mom to of, she was what, Abby was five, four, four, four months. months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. yeah, it was five months, four mm-hmm. months and a half. Yeah. 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 And she was young, but I didn't want to give up the opportunity to go yeah. Yeah. because to me it's not a liability you know no. it's being a mom shouldn't uh, affect the decision you make as a woman mm-hmm. you should be able to do it all but it shouldn't be something you do society i mean being a mom should something society should help you with mm-hmm. not let you just grapple and struggle mm-hmm. on your own mm-hmm. so i decided we got, i was going to go mm-hmm. i didn't know anyone in cape town and I had to find a babysitter through a friend of my husband and fortunately it was sorted out like a week before mm. and we were able to go and it was great mm. because it was a time when I needed to reflect. It was all new to me, you know, being mm. a mom, being young mm. and even uh, having suddenly, when you were hyperactive like I was, mm-hmm. suddenly just getting out of the house was a problem. Mm. <laughs> How am I going to go to the shop to do some groceries? Yeah. Because mm. my husband was at work and you know. Yeah. So uh, taking the decision to come with my daughter to this program, for me, it was an investment. Mm. Mm. And it, it, because all the questions, the first day I did it, the first day how we started interacting, mm. saying what we were expecting and so mm. on. So for me, it was finding a balance, private, professional life. Not existent professional life, but still <laughs> active life. <laughs> you know, trying to find a balance. Mm-hmm. How to be a young mom, and also how to still have a life. You know, yeah. as simple as that. Mm-hmm. And through interacting with all the personalities, who was there, Magda, Mabel. You know, each each relationship, Matazin. You know, each relationship was specific. You know, mm-hmm. it was. I gained something from it. That's why I said mm. at the end, it, I was like a sponge. Mm. Mm. I was there just trying to, because I knew there was something to learn, there was yeah. something to discover, and I was just listening mm. and trying to find out what it was and then reflecting, you know, to try and put some order in all the noises that mm. were, you know, but it was very creative. Mm. And in the end, I think we left Abby and I both enriched. Yeah. Because I know it's something she will remember. Mm-hmm. I made sure because every it, we took the decision now mm-hmm. that everywhere would go. I just sent her a postcard from the country we were mm-hmm. in, yeah. so that when she grows up, 
we will tell her the story mm. of how she has been there or mm. there and you know mm. so for me it's also a story between mother and daughter yeah. you know to it's our own personal relationship mm. Mm. so I'm uh, training her she's young she doesn't know what she's up to <laughs> I want her to be an activist etc et et mm. but yeah it was really a, a self-discovery for me mm. and one thing that I will remember is the concept of Freedom Square Mm. Yes. We were discussing it yesterday yeah. when they invited us. So Freedom Square, like that, you don't have to react all the time and so on. And it shouldn't be a reaction. Mm. It should be a response. Mm. And you should choose how you respond to mm. things that happen in your life. Yeah. So that was just eye-opening for me. Mm. And what I gained from the program is the network. Like Nancy, I met her before the ENP program. We met in Morocco through another program. But when we f I found out that she was doing that program, I wasn't surprised because I can see the kind of individuals that are in this program. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I can see, and even from now, I'm still benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. We are all here thanks to Manda. Mm -hmm. You know, we are all here, and I was particularly able to be there thanks to Mother Tsi, who put me in touch with her cousin mm -hmm. to be my babysitter of, for Abby. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's just beneficial, and also. I'm so rich. I'm so richer <laughs> now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. And he loves the song Beautiful Flower. Oh, the sunflower. He loves it. Loves I wrote it. My sister. Mm -hmm. Ethan, I told her the story. Mm -hmm. oh. I told her the story that you wrote yeah. it for um, your sister mm -hmm. and everything, and she just loves it. Wow. Yeah. And one thing, it's not just forgotten, it's just good for me because. <laughs> It was the song. Like, <laughs> you know, like can you play that song for us? What's the song? It was just I would be like, when, when did this song be created? <laughs> <laughs> I can't take the song anymore. Wow. <laughs> Mabel, mm -hmm. what does it mean for you to be power behind all this happening? I mean, what does it do to your life? Wow. Well, firstly, I think it's being a part of a team of people. Mm -hmm. I, the team that I work with, the team at the Graduate School of Development Policy and Practice is already a dynamic group of people mm -hmm. that are so humble, mm -hmm. that aren't out to, you know, make mm -hmm. a point about anything, mm -hmm. but they're doing what they do because they're passionate. From mm -hmm. Alan to Marianne to Alvina mm -hmm. to Hannah and the rest of the team, you know, Skona and everyone at the school. It's people who really are passionate about working with young people on the continent mm -hmm. and making a difference in terms of, you know, the quality of leadership that we're seeing and the quality of leadership we know is already out there, mm. but also providing the platform so more people know about it. Mm. Yeah, so I think um, from our side, as much as you guys feel like, oh, it's amazing, this is how it was for us. For us, it's always a learning experience awesome, yeah. and we are always transformed mm. as well by everyone that we meet mm. through this program. Mm. And so I think one of the biggest lessons I've taken away is that, or at least one of the principles I think I was saying to some of you earlier, mm -hmm. is that I feel like I'm growing in a family of people. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, our participants, oh, our Emily, those numbers, how mm -hmm. many women, how many, you know, it's not that, mm -hmm. it's people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a person with a story, with a journey that hasn't even completed its only beginning. And that's the exciting part. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that we can still meet and mm -hmm. exchange. I've grown a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And like just being amongst other youth excites me. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who are like passionate and if no one thinks you're crazy or too emotional mm -hmm. or don't talk about politics again mm -hmm. or you know. But be in a space where you're accepted as you are. Mm -hmm. And just uh, that's another principle at the school but also in the program yeah. just giving people the room to be mm. to be who they are and not to be afraid mm. to show up like i said earlier i think in the program today own your space mm. marianne gave me that book by the way mm. own your space so and marianne a it's a book how do they know own your space but yes in south africa, yes. South africa. Oh, i can't remember it's a few scholars i mean authors oh, sorry. yeah 
but I'll give it to you. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, sounds Aww. good. Mm. Yeah. We, should, we can even circulate it amongst the ladies. Okay. Oh, no, no, the circulation doesn't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, yeah, yeah, we should have you to social media. Working with the brain. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Working with I the want to mention more, yeah. but oh. it's stuck somewhere. <laughs> 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 I think someone is using that word. <laughs> Let's get back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's, yeah. And Marianne also just models that as a mother. Mm -hmm. If she has to be at a meeting with her son or to attend one of his games, she lets everyone know in advance. Mm -hmm. It's Wednesday afternoon. On Tuesday, she'll say, guys, I'm, I, my son has a rugby match. I'm going to watch him play rugby. Mm -hmm. So let's schedule our week knowing that mm -hmm. I'm not available. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's such a big thing because mm -hmm. when I look at my mom, like, I love her and she's very supportive, but my mom was always working. Mm -hmm. And you know, like she never attended any of my graduations mm -hmm. because she couldn't, she was working. Mm -hmm. And I think even for that generation, it was work comes first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your family, find someone to watch your kids, forget mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you know. But then watching Marianne as well and how she's modeling that mm -hmm. is, is really inspiring. And of mm -hmm. course, Rama as well, my Todzi, mm -hmm. so many of you, Magda, mm -hmm. Caroline. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. When I'm a mom, I'm going to keep this in mind. We don't have to do... Not that it was a mistake in a sense. I think they had different mm -hmm. pressures. They yeah, had, yeah. You know, work cultures and all of that, yeah. you know. And they were making a way for us in the workplace, firstly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that we could also be recognized mm -hmm. in this space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think for our generation and generations to come, like we can model what we want motherhood to look like. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to look like it has before. Exactly. Talking yeah. of that, I think, Rama, perhaps you could tell us more about feminist parenting. Oh, okay. I didn't expect that to pop up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, what do you think feminist parenting is? Yes, what it is, I really found it fascinating when I asked you what's feminist parenting and you're like, it's appreciating that you can actually learn something from Abby and Abby is an individual and being able to appreciate that and also in terms of toys, not mm -hmm. being able to use like gender toys like mm -hmm focusing on dolls or mm -hmm. focusing on cars for boys but mm -hmm. essentially introducing the child to mm -hmm. all kinds of toys mm -hmm. and so perhaps you might want to elaborate more because I learned the concept from you <laughs> yeah so it's just it's a uh, I didn't even know what it was but it's just becoming a parent mm -hmm. having a mom who is telling me my mom is feminist but in her own ways mm -hmm. she's still she thinks she's a guardian of you know you can be feminine and you don't need to be feminist. That's mm. what she thinks. Mm. And I think you need to be feminist. Mm. I think we all need to be feminist, like Chimamanda. Yes. Why is because when I become a mom, I just found maybe also being in the West, in like in Europe, it was very difficult because then I started appreciating how what we have, like here in Africa, Senegal, or, you know, you have the support system. Mm -hmm. You have a larger family who is here to support and so on. Mm -hmm. So stepping out is not a problem. Mm -hmm. But finding yourself there, having to juggle between you and your husband, mm -hmm. trying to find, you know, it's new to, to both of you because as um, it's in the introduction of the book, with every parent, mm -hmm. with every child, a parent is born. Yeah. Yeah. So it's new for both of us. Mm. But somehow society expects you as a woman to just know how it should be, you know, motherhood, how do you do that to say, the instinct, mm -hmm. motherhood oh, instinct. Oh yes, yes. maternal yeah. instinct. So I was like, fathers too should have a personal Paternal. instinct, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But then it was just a conversation between Alun, Abby and I. Abby mm -hmm. doesn't know anything, but she is here, she is like the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. you know. So, and we have started having conversation with other parents. Uh, very practical things, like how do you do when the whole day you have been with your baby, and at night she wakes up, your husband has to go to work the following day. Mm -hmm. Who wakes up? Mm. He does. So I'm like, you do. And even the room, how he, he will, he's uh, sitting mm. the way, the next to the bed, mm. so that he's the one who's waking up. Don't wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 how do you say, express milk and give him and he does his thing, mm. you know? So it's all these things, those small little things. Mm. And I understood that it is, it should be negotiated. We shouldn't just reproduce mm. or accept that this is how it should be yeah. and you shouldn't yeah. just do it because you are you are a woman mm -hmm. you know because you are a woman is not a, an enough an, mm -hmm. it's not an explanation in itself mm -hmm. so we decided to be parents so we should 
embrace it and share mm. equally. Mm. So to me, being feminist parent is understanding that we cannot just uh, uh, reproduce all the systems of operation, patriarchy, yeah. and so on. Understanding that we are all like understanding really intersectionality. Mm. I am a young African woman uh, living in Europe, uh, Muslim, mm. and so on. And how all this comes together to make me who I am, and also how does it interact mm. with my husband being uh, a young father who chose to work from home, take his pa take his paternity leave, mm. to be there. You know, mm. he took four months, uh, five, four and a half. To be there and then mm. rethink his whole his whole working pattern, mm. you know, to start working from home, mm. to be able to 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 be present. Mm. So all this, it's a new, and I I found out we were not alone. Mm. There were so many parents who were interested in discovering more mm. about how to share things more equally, how to raise your children as individuals, you know, hear them, not impose your own dreams or whatever it is that you have for projects on them but let them be and mm. accom uh, accompany them and support them as you can you know mm. so it is just negotiating agency <laughs> in the family and yeah to me when we're talking about inclusion and so on in the public sphere it should start in the private sphere mm. we are just yeah. out there talking about public policies but not interrogating mm. how we raise our own kids mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. you know it might sound oh this is a new concept and so on feminist parenting I didn't choose it it's just I don't have no other choice it's either you try to be more equal mm -hmm. or you just um, how do you say mm -hmm. or you just you have no other option mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah. so it's just trying to negotiate and not just accept that because traditional ways of parenting because society said it should be so mm -hmm. so that's it for me and I wanted to hear more about what Caroline thinks <laughs> how, the, how do you negotiate between being a mom okay being a mom being a designer yes. being such a young African leader the leader of uh, Africa uh, what, what is it called mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to have, you know Yali how do you do that how do you navigate between your different identities and still be present. Mm. So how do I manage Ubuntu Hub, um, the clothes which I'm still struggling with, uh, mm. the title, my job, my kids. I think it's a journey of discovery and mm. self-discovery. Mm. And as I, as I mentioned before, like, you know, I'm living in an era where we're given much more time to reflect and think mm. inside and sort of unleash all our potential. Mm and have even an access like now i'm so happy i have an access i started making the clothes but now i'm getting an external push <laughs> to even do it more mm -hmm. you understand like you know many people are asking for it and all that stuff and then about to have is like it's at, at the heart of me being a civic leader mm -hmm. and that's my other sort of mm -hmm. you know identity mm -hmm. but i think one uh, most important thing about self-discovery is that once you understand yourself more almost everything is building up mm -hmm. everything is a dot which is connecting to the mm -hmm. big and larger mm -hmm. image you're doing with my small business which I started I'm facing challenges which are going to be to make me a better trainer mm -hmm. of young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. to have. because by then I won't be talking about you know starting up a small business and mm -hmm. challenges of registration of marketing you know customer satisfaction mm -hmm. quality assurance to people if i don't have first-hand mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. but then i'll say um like you know how do you get to connect all these dots mm -hmm. we go back to self-identity and ability to to reflect and think through and understand who you are mm -hmm. and um but another challenge which comes with uh, you know these moments of enlightenment especially for a person who potentially has not had a gradual mm -hmm. growth mm -hmm. like you know I didn't have a lot of trainings or let me say mm -hmm. leadership or exposure mm -hmm. but it's something which has come in a short while mm -hmm. and the excitement was too high and you almost want to do mm -hmm. everything is that the challenge sometimes you can get confused juggling mm -hmm. with what are the rubber balls and what are the glass balls. Mm. Rubber balls can bounce back and you cut them. Mm. But some of the balls if you lose them you 
drop them down mm -hmm. they break yes the japanese would put gold in between and make some art but <laughs> potentially <laughs> <laughs> it won't be a ball, I know. Yeah. You, you know, really, it, yes, it's not like it's not something you walk into like I want to break it and then mm -hmm. I'll make it. But I think uh, the most important thing is really trying uh, to balance. And yeah, it's nice to open up so many opportunities and then you can narrow them down mm -hmm. to what you can manage, to what you can achieve, and what mm -hmm. really contributes mm -hmm. to the bigger image. So I would say, like, I'm so happy and so proud to get confused mm -hmm. in order for me to find myself. Mm -hmm. It's out of that whole mess. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, that's, that's where you sort of find mm -hmm. your personal mm -hmm. message, your, you know, areas which you really, you really want to concentrate on. And for me, it is a privilege. But when it comes to uh, parenting, I think I really the spirit, the African spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. You know what it means to be a mother <laughs> in Africa means like I have a big mm -hmm. social support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I think in a in a space like this, and when you're meeting people like this, such networks also. They sort of really help because it's not easy also mm -hmm. dealing with how the society mm -hmm. labels you mm -hmm. to be a mom. Mm -hmm. And some of us have been raised by village. Mm -hmm. So you find almost every single comment really counts. But it's until when you have uh, Rama to hold on to, you get the energy to persevere and you mm -hmm. understand like, you know, whatever I'm doing now is sort of an investment and it's important that I do it mm -hmm. because, you know, in the end, I, I was just talking to some guys uh, like so uh, he's so proud of his yeah. mom you know the mother went down she was a doctor and all that stuff and the childhood you know she had to travel mm. she was she was the first eye specialist eye specialist and you understand mm. but there was but now you see the kids are proud <laughs> of it so sometimes they get courage <laughs> they get courage because the first time i left my son he was 10 months mm. and my mom was there mm. And it was really tough. I had to I had to express mm -hmm. for three weeks, mm -hmm. day in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, mm -hmm. wow. when others are learning. So for you were running for Abby, I, I was not smart enough to take my kid, but I was like, he's going back to mm -hmm. breastfeeding. I'm not going to deny him mm -hmm. this opportunity. And mm -hmm. I understand how important it is. So I mean, it's all this. Uh, it's just like you know, resilience, mm -hmm. tenacity, commitment, mm -hmm. and passion. Mm -hmm. And being able to to celebrate. I mean, don't take the external pressure, but mm -hmm. really celebrate, mm -hmm. as you understand what you're doing is an investment. Mm -hmm. And the men in our lives, the fathers, mm -hmm. who give us a go ahead. At mm -hmm. least when the community is looking at you funny, mm -hmm. but at least you have your partner who is saying no. Don't yeah. really care. Yeah. Don't listen to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. It's about us. It's about our families. So. Mm -hmm. Also, I think I'm really seeing an increasing role mm -hmm. of men. Like, it's not only changing for us yeah. occupying yeah. our spaces, but I think we are also having a generation of men who are much more understanding and who yeah. are much more involved. Mm -hmm. And I think that really gives me so much hope for the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, That's amazing so when, you, when you raised about the men, because we always forget yeah. um, to talk about them. And mm -hmm. we always forget that if we don't have a support system, mm -hmm. uh, not the not the bigger uh, mm -hmm. community support system, but our own husbands, mm -hmm. our own mm -hmm. our own people that are supporting us. I was thinking of Matuzi actually, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. Freddie was there for you during those two weeks, mm -hmm. and I thought he was the most amazing guy. Mm -hmm. And those guys, mm -hmm. um, and also my husband too. Mm -hmm is very very actually very supportive of everything that I do mm -hmm. um, he's at home now taking care of everything he does mm -hmm. the groceries mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. and I'm so proud of the, the time that has you know we've mm -hmm. arrived to this mm -hmm. time period mm -hmm. where our husbands are very supportive to to, yeah. to everything that we're doing and, and I'm amazed by mm -hmm. the the individuals that we we call our partners and, mm -hmm. and, and our husbands and we always tend to forget that we yeah. don't have that kind of a support system. We mm -hmm. won't be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I actually I was looking at this uh, uh, um, ad for Amazing Fathers. It was a photo exhibition that's supposed mm -hmm. to happen in Addis. It says Amazing Amazing Fathers. And I'm like, that is so true. There are so many amazing fathers, mm -hmm. starting from mine. Mm -hmm. um, he was the most supportive dad ever. Mm -hmm. um, and I was now able to, God gave me a, a very supportive 
husband as well, so that we could be the best people we can be, the best women we can be, mm -hmm. uh, so that we can inspire other young women, mm -hmm. other young men as well. And and it's just for me, it's a it's a very humbling experience. It's not I can't credit myself for everything that I've accomplished. I credit my husband, I credit my pa my, yeah. my parents, my dad, my mom. Um, but yeah. And that's what I was thinking when I was when you were talking about the men. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We need to be bold enough to give them credit. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about them um, mm -hmm. uh, every time in a, in a feminist or gender conversation. Mm -hmm. This is where I get really angry because the the conversations mm -hmm. tend to happen in between women mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's so sidelined, we lose sight of what's important. Mm -hmm. um, it's about the partnership, uh, yeah. it's about clapping mm -hmm. with two hands instead of one. Mm -hmm. um, we always, we always need to keep that, mm -hmm. that, um, that important point of, mm -hmm. of the fact that we need the men in our lives. Mm -hmm. We need, not only we need, but we need to be able to bring them to our own movements mm -hmm. um, and our own work. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they think that our own homework, our feminist movement, mm -hmm. your husband, mm -hmm. teaching you, teaching Abby the the the, the, the feminist, mm -hmm. what is it that you call feminist it? parenting? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's actually okay with that. He's an amazing yeah. man. Mm -hmm. He actually believes that's important. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the most amazing thing. Cause that is yeah. grateful, you know, because I know something is very difficult. Yeah. I have taken Abby for. If you put it in total, it's nearly six months in one year, and it is oh. the first year of Abby's life, you know. Yeah. And I know the first time I had to go, even for me, it was a hard mm. decision to make. Mm. Two days before going, I didn't want to go anymore mm. because I was like, who am I to take this daughter from her dad mm. and go selfishly do my field work, mm. Mm. and that she want he won't see her for the first for the you know three months, mm. you know. Mm. I was just questioning that and he was like, you have to go and do what you have to do. Yeah. We knew when we had this project that you were studying. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you knew what were in it. So we take it all. Yeah. Years ago, yeah. I'd be sad that I was alive. Mm -hmm. And we just made arrangements to be together. Yeah. You see, so this, it is very encouraging. Yeah. And yeah. as you were saying, yes. just, and for me, it is another motivation when I want to give up and anything, I'm just like, wait, do you know what it took you what it took someone else for mm. you to be there so mm. just do what yeah. you have to do you don't have time to lament or anything just do what you have to do yeah. and also seeing Freddie one more time you know when we were yeah, there yeah. in the cave seeing Freddie doing everything exactly. you know mm. taking it's not him helping you he was taking care of his, his children. own children yeah. Yeah. yeah so acknowledging that this is my role and I'm going to embrace it totally yeah. mm. it was just inspiring mm. you know it, really was. It, mm. it was inspiring and I think also we need to acknowledge and also maybe inspire if the younger are listening if this <laughs> if they want to listen <laughs> that who you partner or who you yes. marry is really important mm. it is really important for your personal development for mm. your career for everything mm. who you choose to partner with mm. is really important mm. Mm. also because it's important for your I mean the help and the partnership is it's really great but also I think the point that you were touching to is that when that relationship mm. is healthy and mm. is good mm. you're also in a good mental state in terms yeah. of what you can focus on mm. and your work mm. and also your own confidence because I think yeah. we have to accept it one of the greatest um, I don't know what to call it for women one of the biggest struggle for most women is probably feeling secure on yeah. who you are and trusting that I know what I'm doing and whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that relationship has been shown in many research that is the one relationship that can shape women mm -hmm. so even the most powerful women if that relationship is not yeah. going well they can start to doubt themselves so even that part for me I think it's an, it's it's important because I've seen the value of it in my relationship mm -hmm. you know but also I've seen it even with my parents um, and at the same time because I mean no fault of his own because the party system took black fathers away from the kids. I grew up with that my dad, even though he existed, like you know, he worked in Joburg and I was in Venda and hardly saw him. Mm. At the same time I know that I'm 
I'm, I'm petrified of being an absent parent mm -hmm. because I know what it's like mm -hmm. to be the child of a parent who's not there. Mm -hmm. And I know what it can leave you with as mm -hmm. the child. Mm -hmm. And each time when I've had to make a decision about traveling and, you know, and living near and now her brother, it has, it has always been such a difficult decision mm -hmm. because I just think at the same time I don't I don't want to have achieved everything and my child yeah. or my children feel like yeah. but you were not here yeah. yes we are proud of what you've yeah, achieved in the world mm -hmm. but you know mm -hmm. we hardly saw you or whatever mm -hmm. you know so sometimes even um, because sometimes it's not been just the traveling it's just the amount of work and like running around between things and being on the phone even when you're at home mm -hmm. trying to make sure that things are complete and whatever so I'm always conscious of that and and thinking about how that affects them you know um, and and so something that I'm always like it's always playing in in my mind and I always share it with my friends also because because of my own personal um, story I've always said even to Friggan like if you were to get a job somewhere and it meant you being away, I will quit my job if it That's means probably, us yeah. stay together. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and there are times when, you know, whenever I tell people, they're just like, why would you do that? And yeah. I'm just like, because I grew up with my dad yeah. who I saw twice in a year and mm. missed him terribly. Um, you know, like now he just retired and went back, um, went back home. And I'm very proud of my mom because actually the reason why we ended up being apart is because my mom decided that Soweto was not for her. Mm -hmm. Soweto was like a terrible place in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone in her generation she was very proud of it because she was at a time where women stayed with her husbands wherever. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I'm going back and I'm going to go study and I'm going to go work. Which all of us were, and if all of her friends were very um, proud of it. And I think for me, I was very happy that she didn't allow us to grow up in Soweto because I don't think life would have been the same. Um, would have been the same. But yeah, but I think for me, yeah. So just this issue about our um, our partners is really just something that I cherish mm -hmm. quite um, dearly because it allows me to be here at this time mm -hmm. and not be worried about exactly. um, you know about them. But at the same time, I know it always kind of plays in my mind mostly mm -hmm. if I'm out often or um, mm -hmm. you know like busy um, all the time mm -hmm. and also because like for most of us women you know that's why they said the private is, 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 is political because mm -hmm. we also can't really separate a work so something is stressing us at work whatever mm -hmm. you know like they said guys are like waffles mm -hmm. and we like spaghetti and part of it is true right because mm -hmm. like everything is connected how we're feeling about our work yeah. and how we're feeling about ourselves mm -hmm. and whatever all that is connected but I think also the support we offer to each other mm -hmm. is also quite important because I think sometimes as women we can be brutal with mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. You know, we can judge each other quite harshly when mm -hmm. someone does something that we think, you know, mm -hmm. um, and instead of creating that space where we can be supportive, and mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, it's in you know, another woman coming into a meeting with their baby mm -hmm. or somebody else, you know, whatever it is of being feeling very vulnerable because they've had to travel and their child mm -hmm. was sick and, mm -hmm. and how we create that supportive environment mm -hmm. for women. And as we grow in our careers, the other thing also is to watch how we treat other women, yeah. particularly in the workplace, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of conditions we create mm -hmm. for them, whether that enables them to be the women they want to be or we mm -hmm. come you know, we be, we also become like you know the 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 man in the system mm -hmm. and create mm -hmm. like you know. So um, I think that's why I think going back to the issue that we we're talking about about the programs, mm -hmm. that investment in self reflection mm -hmm. is something that I think for me I will always take mm -hmm. forward because if we're not self reflective, mm -hmm. we will be Running. we will do exactly the same mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. but also we will forget ourselves mm -hmm. and why we do what we um, what we do and what's the most important thing in, um, in life and just jumping on that quickly I think we should also hold space for our other sisters you know in relationships we are talking about relationships not all women are married and yeah. I know I don't know about all African societies but in Senegal it's really difficult to be a young single woman at a certain age, mm -hmm. you know, because 
society just reminds you what you should be or mm. who you should be at this age or mm. what you should want even mm. yeah. yeah and should and want are antithetical you know mm. Mm. what you want is personal mm. Mm. but society keeps reminding you uh, time is time is how do they say ticking ticking mm. you know mm. yes so mm. if you want to share anything about it wow interesting so we recently had a, a very big sensational story that went has gone viral in Kenya by one of the bloggers mm -hmm. and the blogger is focused on criticizing the above 27 year old single woman mm -hmm. and what he I would, I would I wouldn't go into the what he's focused on on that particular issue but connect that obviously I'm above 27 year I'm mm -hmm. above 27 years not dating and planning to get married but no one in the picture mm -hmm. and so for me my parents haven't insisted that I need to get married like mm -hmm. my, mom, my mom hasn't reminded me my dad mm -hmm. hasn't reminded me so for me I have that peace of mind but the only problem is when you meet with other young people who like oh my gosh you need to at least even get a child <laughs> mm -hmm. oh gosh. yeah you need at least get a child mm -hmm. and so for me I think Sometimes it can be stressful because sometimes, like when I travel and go back home, I'm always like, oh, I wish I could get, I, I could go back home and mm -hmm. find someone there. Mm -hmm. But what I discovered was, I shouldn't wish to be married when I'm single. I should enjoy being single. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. along the way, those things will fall in place as mm -hmm. long as I'm not um, restricting myself, but mm -hmm. just enjoying life mm -hmm. and just having fun. And that is why I decided to get a puppy because I was like. As I'm still waiting for this man, wherever he is, I'd rather have a puppy who mm -hmm. I can be able to take for walks, mm -hmm. I can be able to like take care of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also like the one that I do mm -hmm. like with mentor mentoring young young people. Mm -hmm. So that at least inspires me seeing the transformation in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so in a sense I'm not quite worried, mm -hmm. but sometimes I, I do get stressed. Mm -hmm. I also do get um because I do get um those lonely moments mm -hmm. but what has really helped me is that I have this particular friend every Sunday mm -hmm. every Sunday consistently one o'clock she's like Nancy we're going for lunch here and she's with her husband like we're going for lunch here let's go yeah. on my birthday they're like mm -hmm. it's your birthday you want to go and celebrate here and I was like wow this mm -hmm. is quite amazing yeah yeah and Valentine's Day in Nairobi really gets it really reminds you that you need to be <laughs> You need to be dating <laughs> or at least <laughs> and so on those days we just try and do fun stuff mm -hmm. yeah and having supportive sisters mm -hmm. like friends who are just like sisters and mm -hmm. being able to share those difficult moments mm -hmm. and just trying to find creative ways of meeting with people mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. In fact, you brought up something quite interesting. I a good friend of mine, she's all in her mid-30s now, mm -hmm. um, and we were just talking about the challenges of having children in your 30s, actually. Yeah. You're in the thick of your career. <laughs> <laughs> and like, even physically, I have other friends that are struggling to fall pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, you know, she said to me, you know what, me? I'm, I'm going to get artificial insemination. Mm -hmm. insem what is it? Insemination? Mm -hmm. Insemination. Mm -hmm. Insemination, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was happy for her. I said, girl, if that's what you want, you go, go get your baby, you know? Yeah. I mean, I just thought, for some women, it's like, okay, I want to have a baby now. Yeah. Should they then not have a baby because it's not the norm in society, mm -hmm. if that's what they want. Yeah. You know? It, it challenged my thinking because you always think, oh, that's something that's happening now. But when it's someone close to me, you're like, wow, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But in a, in a way that opens you up, it's good because yeah. it opens up the possibilities as well for women. Yeah. Like, and how they can fulfill their lives and, and do what they want to do without feeling like, I have to find someone. Because I also know people that also got married quite young, yeah. friends of mine. And by the time they hit 30, they were getting divorced, separated, but with children. Yeah. It was very messy. Yeah. 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 And, but there's they, always timing for everything. Yeah, yeah there's timing everyone. for everything. Yeah. For, yeah. For, in, yeah. for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that as women, just being confident in our own yeah. skin, mm -hmm. knowing what we want. And then if the right person who's whatever comes along and you're like, yeah, then let's do this life thing together. Yeah, great, yeah. you know. But if not, it's not a train smash. It's not the end of life. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
there's another expression of love that's going to manifest in your life either way. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. I think the reason as to why my parents haven't really stressed me about getting married is because they separated. Mm -hmm. And so I live with my mom, my dad lives separately. But it's also that notion of I don't want to have a child without the father being there. Mm -hmm. And so I want to have a child in a family. Sort of like mm -hmm. give my child what I didn't have. And mm -hmm. so for me, that has been like my driving force of mm -hmm. not wanting to like mm -hmm. just get a child for the getting a child's sake. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. I remember when I went to the Ghana some time back and they're like, oh, you just have two fibroids. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and you need to get a child in the next six months. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so now I went and told my friends and they're like, no, your doctor is a bad person. You just mm. need to go and for a second opinion. You don't need to because mm. he was arguing that if you don't do that in the next one year at least, you might start having low fertility as you grow older. And I was like, no, if God wants me to have a child, mm. I still have a child. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that really encouraged me is because my mentor mm. who took me up as an intern and I stayed in that organization for like three years, they had issues not getting a child and it took them over seven years and she had fibroids and she was able to deliver in the seventh year mm -hmm. of their marriage and now they have two children and so for me I was like wow this is going to be mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's not final no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so how about we just use three to describe three words that come to your mind when you talk about being young and African today, so that we can wrap up. <laughs> For me, it would be vibrant, mm -hmm. creative, and disruptive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, my next. Okay. Uh, for me, it would be vision carriers, mm -hmm. friendship, and action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, you've taken all the words. <laughs> innovative. Mm -hmm. Seems creative, but innovative. Mm -hmm. uh, just amazing. Full of energy. Mm -hmm. Full of energy. Mm -hmm. um, and then not afraid mm -hmm. of anything. Fearless. Yeah, fearless. Mm -hmm. United and hard to act. Sure. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Bam. I know. I can't like see that bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I think it's connectors. So young people are connectors, mm -hmm. creative and colorful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's um, inspired. Um, possibilities mm -hmm. and taking action. I know that's not necessarily a word, but <laughs> yeah. 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 This was a great conversation. Wanda! 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 For wrapping up, yeah. <laughs> I'm a woman. <laughs> you caught me off guard. I'm trying to think what to sing. Wait. I'm trying to think. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. okay. Shave. I don't have my mirror with me. Okay. Um. Should I start now? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> the day you were born, the fields began to sing. Blue out of mine Daddy's a little girl We didn't know you would come But we were happy you had one Blue out of mine you guys can help me with the chorus if you know it. <laughs> one, two, three, come to sunflower. 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 I'm a dream.
the time you sent me cheese love. <laughs> yes. Alright, you guys want a photo? Yes. yes. <laughs>